the Gemara has a dispute who instituted Tfila. So one opinion in the Gemara is Tfila's Avos Tiknun, that Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov instituted Tfila. Avram, Shacharis, Yitzchak, Mincha, and Yaakov, Mayriv. And the other opinion is Tfila Kineged Karbanos. Tfila corresponds to the Karbanos that they brought the Talmud Shel Shachar in the morning, the Talmud Shel Ben Abayim in the afternoon, and the leftover Ivar and Pidarim that was corresponds to um, the Mayrev service. So, and in fact, it, in one of the Akronim, they just bring down that in the second word, the second letter of each of the Abbas' name represents the Tvila. Avraham, so second letter is Bez, that's Bokir, he instituted Shacharis. Yitzchak, Sadi, Saharayim, the afternoon. And Yaakov, Erev, Aravis. So it's an allusion to the three different types of Tvila. So Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov instituted the Tvilas or Kenegar Karbonus. Uh, the Gemara says, what about Musaf? So therefore, even if you hold Tfilas Avas Tiknun, you have to say As Michel Kra Karbanas. So the basic Gemara concludes there are both aspects of the Tfila. There's Tfila Kineged Avos and there's Tfila Kineged Karbanos. And, and the two different types of Tfila, as the Meshachachma explains, is at the end of Parshish Vayechi, Bacharbi of Akashti, that the Kharbi is sword, Kashti is bow and arrow. So the Targum Unkelis explains it to mean Tfila, not bow and arrow. I what forced him to go out of the Pshuto? Because when you're fighting a war, first you shoot bows and arrows, then you get closer, you do hand to hand combat. But here, you, it says Kharbi first, so it must be something else. So the two types of Tfila, the Salusi of Usi. So the Mesha Chachma explains, Charbi, that's like a sword. That's the Tfila that the Anshe Knesset Agadola, the our set formal Tfila that will say Tfila Knesset Karbonos. That's inherently powerful. It's like a sword. A little nick on the neck could finish you off. And Chazal were in tune what words we should use for davening. So even by merely reading the Hebrew words and not even knowing what you're saying, I'm not recommending it. I'm being descriptive. But this reading the words itself is powerful in its own right. And a bow and arrow is the more you pull back, the more effort you put in, the farther it goes. That's the Tfilah connected Avos, that each one had different situations. Abraham was the rising star of the morning. He was in the 5 o'clock news. He taught that even during good times, one has to recognize, pray to Hashem. And... Yaakov was Tfilas Aravis night time, even during bad times, during Golas, one has to pray. But Yitzchak is the hardest, as the Gemara says, well, Mincha is the hardest one. You get the most scar for Mincha, the practical reason, some say, because it's the middle of the day, therefore it's hard to find time to daven. But from an inherent level, that it's much harder that right now Yitzchak, it's good times, because he's still living off from Avraham, but the bad times are coming, so that's much. That's a much harder time to feel the need. It's easy to feel the need when you're overcome with an abundance of good, or con conversely, when your devastation comes. But when you're in them, when you're in good times now and potentially bad later, it's much harder. So even Yitzchak, so they all represent feel can I get others? They represent different stages. And therefore, we have to pray all the time. So those are the, as the Meshachachma says, it is, those are the different types of Tvila. Tvila Keneged Avos and Tvila Keneged Karbanos. So the Gemara goes on to explain that there's a concept of Tashrumin. There's a concept of makeup. In other words, of a if a person didn't have in Shacharis and the Zaman of Shacharis passes, you can make it up by davening Mincha twice. And if you forget Myrav, you can daven Shacharis twice. And the Gemara discusses what about if you forget Mincha 
for Mincha and Amayar. Why is that an issue? Because for Mincha and Amayar, it's two different days. So perhaps you say, Avar Yomo Batel Karbano. Maybe the once you say the day passes. Then that's what we pass can no. It doesn't make a difference whether you miss Shacharis, Mincha, Mayrev, the Chiv, Tashrumin, the obligation to make it up applies to the next Tfila. And it's a Machokas in the Rishonim how far Tashrumin goes, but we just assume that you only can make up the next Tfila. You can't make up three, if you, if you forgot Shacharis three weeks ago, you can't make it up now. It's only if I'm davening Mincha now and I didn't daven Shacharit and I could daven two Shmona Esrays at Mincha. Tashlumah means that I just, I repeat a second Shmona Esray because Tefillah, Shmona Esray is really the halachic Tefillah. So, so that's the Gemara. There's no difference between any of the Tefillahs, Shacharit, Mincha, Mayra. The Tosis asks, what about Musaf? What about Tashlumen by Musaf? The Tosis points out, the f- we see the fact that the Gemara doesn't mention Musaf, we see there is no Tashlumen by Musaf. It's Avar Yomo Bato Karbono, because Tosis says, because by Shacharis Mincha Mayrev Tfilah B'Yisodo Rachamim. Basically, you're requesting mercy. That's appropriate all the time. 24-7. Halvai Shal Yispel Adam Kol Yom Kulo. But Tfilat Musav is connected Karbanos, and therefore Ava Yom Ovato Karbano. And that's why there is no Tashlumen by Musav. Let me just point out, Musav is in the same Zman as Mincha. So, even though we dive in Shacharis, Musav, and, and Mincha, we usually have a Musav in the morning, but strictly you have Musav Kohayom. And therefore, let's say, if you, in theory, you didn't dive in Shacharis, but you dive in Musaf, so you could still do a Tashlumen. Musaf isn't an interruption in terms of the next Tvila, because Musaf and Mincha are in the same time zone. It's only if you waited to after the Zman Mincha Musaf is over, then it would be too late. So, Tosfus, so we, we see a big Yisod in Tosfus that Tvila connected Rachamim, and that's why the Gemara says Pshita. The Nashim Chayav is Vitzvila because it's Rachavim Ninu. However, Musaf is connected to Karbana, so perhaps, and in fact, it seems to be the Halacha that women are exempt from the mitzvah Musaf. Doesn't mean they can't have a Musaf. In fact, as a general rule, it's a Machokis Rishonim, the Rambam, and the Balitos, and the Tam, Ashkenaz versus Svard, whether women can and should volunteer. Mitzvah says Shazman Grama. So it's a machos in the Gemara. Rabbi Huda says it's Baal Tosif. If they do, you're adding to the Torah. We don't pass that. We assume it's not Baal Tosif. And we assume a halacha that a general rule, woman can do a mitzvah say Shazman Grama. The machos, the Rambam and the Baal Tosif isn't if they can do it. The issue is can they make a bracha or not. So, so, the Svarid and Pasuk, like the Rambam, no. And we go, Ashkenaz go with the Rabbi Notam, that yes, a woman can not only volunteer the mitzvah, they can volunteer the bracha. I, how could you say, Asher, can you tell me it's a mitzvah? No, that's what the Svarid's time is. How could you say, mitzvah? No, the women aren't commanded the volunteering. And we assume, no, mitzvah is going on the generic volunteering. It's not going on a specific person. And it's not going on me, it's Chai so has commanded this mitzvah, so therefore I can do it. Therefore a woman can even make the bracha. So there's a discussion, so therefore, again, the different minhago among the svar, but so let's say a woman's going to sit in the sukkah, so if you're Ashkenaz, you'll sit in the sukkah, Ashkenaz woman, you'll sit in the sukkah without a bracha, but I mean a Svardi woman will sit in the sukkah without a bracha, and Ashkenaz will make a bracha. There's an interesting, interesting discussion regarding Tfilas Musaf. Can a Svardi woman dive in Musaf? Because why? Because we don't have brachas. In fact, in general, this parenthetically, and it happens many times with women that they come, they're busy with the kids or whatever the issues are, and they come in Musaf time. So really, they're only going to dive in one Tfilas. Many of them just go in and dive in Musaf. Really, 
you should be davening shacharis. Shacharis, yechayevin, at least according to some. Definitely more than Musa. Musa is clear you're exempt. Shacharis should potentially chayevin. So therefore, it's, if you're only going to daven one tefillah, you're better off davening shacharis than Musa. So either way, um, so either way they point out that It's a, what about Svarni woman davening Musaf? So, Pasha, she'll say, well, it's a mitzvah, it's kind of, oh, it's not a mitzvah, say, it's a grammar, maybe it is, but it's, uh, it's something women are exempt from, and therefore, how could they say Vitzivano? So, someone, so it's a machokis, the node to be Yehuda, and the Avot to Yosef, and others. Let's say, what's the problem? Why can't a woman make a bracha on a mitzvah, say, she's a grammar? Is it a fundamental issue? I'm exempt from the mitzvah. I can't make a bracha since I'm doing a b'toras enu mitzuba viyose. Well, no. It's not a fundamental issue. It's a technical issue. How can I say the word vitzivanu if I'm not commanded? So what's the my nafkamina? Either way, a woman can't make a bracha. The nafkamina is because she daven musta because you say, okay, Abraham, okay, Yitzhak, okay, Yaakov, there is no vitzivanu. So therefore, even among Svardi women, among the minhagim, that women don't make a bracha on sukkah, on lulav, etc., there are those, as you can make a, a further case, that women can make, can daven musaf, because you're not saying vitzivano. So one, so based on the so that Tosis brings down, that there's no tashlumin, based on the Gemara, but Tosis says it, there's no tashlumin on Musaf, so we see number one is there's no tashlumin, because Abba Yom Vatul Karbano. And then it's, so it's because Tfil is connected Karbanos and not connected Rachamim, and therefore, perhaps, not perhaps, the women are exempt um, from the mitzvah of davening Musaf. That's a whole discussion um, to get into with the. Uh, Machsis Shekel in terms of Karban and Sibor, etc. They have a discussion over there regarding the woman's obligation, etc. and Musaf. So that's a separate discussion. So that's a major difference between Musaf and the other Tfilas. In fact, that's why they point out that the post can discuss with the Yevit if a person davened. See, on Yantif, we have the same Shmona Esrei for Yantif, whether you're davening Aravis, Shacharis, and Mincha. Well, on Shabbos, we all know we have three different Shmona Esreis. The Friday night davening, Reichu, is referring to, referring to the Shabbos of my separations. Then you have Yismach Moshe, Maman Nezchelko, Shabbos, and Maan Torah. And you have Atayacha, Vashem Kayacha, the Shabbos, and Yemos HaMashiach, when everyone's going to recognize one God. So the post can discuss whether Bidi Yavid, if one dab in the wrong Shimon Esrei, whether they're Yotze or not. But everyone agrees, and of course, they, and plus they discuss it when you, if you remember, so let's say you started saying, this morning, the bracha, do you finish that bracha now? But regarding Musaf, everyone agrees that you're not Yotze by David Musaf instead of Mincha or instead of Shacharis, it's not good because Musaf, we see, is fundamentally different than Shacharis because, and Shacharis and Mincha because it's something which is Yisodo, you're exempt. So that's the Yisod of Tosis based on the Gemara that Musaf is different than Shacharis, Mincha, Meir. Number one, we didn't have a specific of of us tikkun. We don't have a special of who did musaf. But nevertheless, they discuss the nafkamina of tashlum, and there is no tashlum once you miss musaf because it's connected carbonos, and therefore tashlum is based on rachamim, and therefore women, even though they're chayiv and tefila, are exempt in the mitzvah of musaf. And whether they make a bracha, whether they actually daven musaf, that's uh, different minhagim among the Ashkenaz and Svart. The Gemara tells us in brachas 
On the Chavav Amad Beis 26b, it discusses the dispute of who instituted Tefillah. Was it the Avos? One opinion is Avram instituted Chacharis, Yitzchak, Mincha, and Yaakov, Meirev. And the other opinion is it's Keneged Karbanos. It corresponds to the sacrifices they brought every morning. The Tamid Shel Shachar, the morning sacrifice, that's Shacharis. The afternoon sacrifice is Mincha. And then all the leftovers, they finished off, they burned them at night. So there's no... There's no special tefillah from Mayrev corresponding to the Karbana. So, to those are the two opinions in the Gemara, whether tefillah can neged avos or tefillah can neged Karbana. So, the, so what about Musaf? There's Yosef, who's the fourth of. So, the Gemara says, you're right, so basically you need both. Tefillah can neged avos, vas mechino kra, but we also... Basically, we take both aspects of tefillah. There's a concept of tefillah keneged avos, and there's a concept of tefillah keneged karbanos. So the two aspects of the mitzvah of tefillah. So, there's a, what exactly does that mean then? In real life, tefillah keneged avos, tefillah ke, how does it affect me? What, the, what, what differences are there? So there's an interesting meshech chachma at the end of Parshat Vayichi, the Meshach Chachman talks about, the Torah says, Becharbi Ubakashti, with my sword and bow and arrow. That's what the Pasuk means. However, Targum Unkulis, which usually takes Shuto Shomik, usually does the literal translation, doesn't say sword and bow and arrow, it says, with Visalusi Ubalusi, with my prayer. The different levels of prayer. There's a more deeper, more concentrated prayer, and there's a less concentrated prayer. So what forced the Targum Unkulis to take it out of the regular pshat? Since when does Kharbi and Kashti, sword and bow and arrow, mean prayer? So obviously he said it can't mean literally why, because back in the day, during my time, before they had tanks and machine guns, how they used to fight wars, they used to... So when you're far away, you used to, you used to shoot the bow and arrow. When you got closer, you took out the sword and you did hand-to-hand combat. So it should have said Bacharbi, should have said Bakashti, U Bacharbi, should have said first the bow and arrow and then the sword. And the fact that it shows it can't be talking about fighting because that's not the way you fight. So what are these two different types of, um, these two different categories of Tvila? What does it mean, the Tvila of Kharbi and the Tvila of Kashti? So the Meshachachm explains, and I'll elaborate on it, the Briskarov says similar that. Even though there's a machlokis, the Rambam and the Ramban, regarding whether the mitzvah of tefillah, prayer in general, is a biblical or rabbinical, the Rambam writes by Manani's, mitzvah asay was follow b'chol yom. It's a positive mitzvah every day, a biblical mitzvah to pray every day. A biblical mitzvah. The Ramban, he limits it to a sara, time of need. He says, usually prayer is biblical, Usually prayer is rabbinical, but if it's a time of need, so then it becomes biblical. It's a, so it seems to be a fundamental machok as Rambam Rambam, whether prayer is biblical or rabbinical. Rav Salavashik points out that it's more of a local dispute. Everyone agrees the only time prayer is biblical is during the time of need. A Sarah. But the, the machok is the Rambam and the Ramban is, how do you define a Sarah? So the Ramban takes the more external, a war, an earthquake, tsunami, there's a real press, you know, Hurricane Sandy, whatever you want to call it, that's a real Esara, and then prayer becomes biblical. Well, the Rambam says, we all know, every day who doesn't have Saras in their life, we wake up in the morning, we go through days, human existence, the frailty of humans, that's an Esara, and therefore, that's considered, the Machok is what do you consider a Sara? But everyone agrees the Iker Tvila is Tvila the a Sara. So that's the Machok is Rambam and the Ramban. So there's, so what's the Tvila of Kharbi of the sword? So Anshay, even though, even, even if you hold like the Rambam, that Tvila is biblical, but everyone agrees the text we read in our Shemona Esri isn't biblical. That's from 
the Anshay Knesset Hagadol, the great rabbis, the great from the great assembly. So, so they, so how did they pick prayer? They, you know, whether it was Ruach Hakodesh or they were intuited, they knew exactly what words to use. Because when you're talking to a king, we forget he's Avinu and he's Malkeno. We forget God, he's our Father, he's also our King. You know, but imagine you go to a king, to some tyrant, and you make a request. If you don't get the exact wording right, you ain't walking out of that room. At least not alive. One little nick on the, you know, you know, will chop your head off. You have to be very careful when you're speaking to the king the right word. So, even though God is our king, you know, we don't have that relationship, but we still have to be careful in terms of what words we use. So, Anshik and is very meduyak in terms of how we use the word. That's why there are those who want to, those who want to make changes in the sitter. And you know the different types of changes. I'm a, when you're talking about different minhagim outside, you know, whether adding, we, we add in the sign of token, if other things, that's a separate discussion. But some want to change the actual text of the Shemona Esrei. So, so even, we, we even have this discussion, the Gavar and the Rishonim, the Rishonim talk about um, adding Micha Mocha and Zachreinu Wachayim and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. And it's, and it's a big issue. Well, what my salaminig is, but the, but the Rishonim are, have given a very hard time actually change. So, so we see certainly we can, you know, for us to make changes today, um, you know, many say you can't do, you know, whether you want to, because there's some who want to add to okay Abraham, or okay you, they want to say, what about Sarah, Rivka, that Leia Rachel, I don't have a problem with any of the most. They were, I'm sure, they were great people, but what happened to Moshe Rabbeinu? Why don't we say, okay, Moshe, why don't we say, okay, Aaron, not me, but Moshe's brother, okay, David, like, so where do you draw the line? So, obviously, it had nothing to do with how great the person was, because Moshe Rabbeinu is the greatest of all. So, obviously, it's based on a Pasuk, they quote, that the Pasuk mentioned Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So, therefore, you know, you run into danger, you know, trying to change the Nusach HaTzfila. So besides, from a Hashkafic point of view, but based on the Meshach is each word is the Charbi. In other words, if you're going to change the text, that you're going to, you're going to lessen the power of the Shemon Esrei. So there's the Charbi, there's the sword, it doesn't need much. So the, the good news is that if you read Hebrew and you don't know what you're saying or you're, not, you're spacing out, I'm not recommending this, I'm being descriptive of, of course, one should read it in Hebrew and have the appropriate kavanah and, and understand what you're saying. That's why we have the English in front of us. But post facto, you read the words of the Shemona Esrei, even though you were spacing out, you didn't really, you, those words are powerful, powerful in their own right, because it's like a sword. You don't have to know how to use it. If it's sharp enough, you nick someone on the neck, that's all you have to know, it's over. So. If we keep to the text of the Anshak and the at least that by itself, is, that's the power of Kharbi. And that's perhaps, we could say that's Tfila Kineged Karbanos. That the Karba means it's the same, that same way. We bring the same Karba in the same place 365 days of the year. There's a, that's the power of the Karba. And have, that's the power of our Tfila Kavua we have in the Shemona Ezra. The Tfila Kineged Avos is the second part of prayer, which we all which is important, is we ask for our own personal needs. So when you get to Rafa'inu, you add in the people you know who are sick, who need a Rafa'a Shlema. When you get to Atacha and Antanu, God, give me Chachma, I gotta do well on my test today, or my report, or, or I gotta know what to say on the interview, or know how to get the client, whatever, whatever stage of life one is in, you always need Chachma, let me tell you. And then when you get Shema so there's so the good news is usually the tefillah that you're praying for that you mean, actually, you usually have more kavana. If you're praying for the business now to go, you usually have kavana. If I mean, you know what, maybe there should be rain in Israel, or maybe the Mashiach, okay, you know, how serious are we, not, not saying we shouldn't be, but how serious are we when we're going through the motion, but if it's something on Misa, that's why I'm saying it, when, when terrible tragedies happen all the time, but it should hit us, but it doesn't always, but let's say, to for Hurricane Sandy, it might have been much easier because most of us know someone or people who are directly affected. It shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't be, 
we should be on the level where we feel the tsar of even a stranger the same way. But obviously that's just not reality. Most people, obviously if it's a family member or someone, a close friend, you know, it's going to mean more. Of course we should strive that everyone should mean that way. But the reality is that the more the more you pray for something, so you can have more kavan if you want. Like the Gemara tells us in Makis, the Gemara says the person who kills unintentionally b'shogeg, he's put into the city of refuge, the Are Miklat. So, and how long does he have to stay there? Until Mace Kohen Gadol, until the Kohen Gadol dies. So the so Chazal tell us what does the mother of the Kohen Gadol do? What is the wife of the Kohen Gado? Maybe the daughters, this maybe today's sons. I don't know if it's doing the cooking and baking. So you bake some good chocolate chip cookies, some brownies, some melt away, some cookage, whatever it takes, and you give it out to the people because why? You don't want them praying for the death of the Kohen Gado. I have to worry about these people are in Ari Mikwa. Like, you know, they kill Bishogik, but never, so we worry about them. So the answer is because we worry about them because they really mean it. Because that's stuck in the Ari Mikra until the... So their prayers, other prayers are just as meaningful, but they're going to have a lot more kavana on the... Per- then, oh yeah, the Kohen Gadda should stay alive. How We're not in the Ari Mikra, we don't feel it directly. That was the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu. That Moshe Rabbeinu was able to feel the Tsar. That's where Paro underestimated Moshe. You think, what, I'm not worried, Moshe is the leader? Oh, he was brought up in the palace. He doesn't care about these slaves here. Who are, and then the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu, he was able, to, even though he wasn't in that situation, he was able to feel the tsar of others just like he was there. And in fact, and that's, that's why, in fact, when Moshe Rabbeinu was running, in other words, we know later on, Moshe was involved in the mitzvah of Ari Mikla. Speaking of Ari Mikla, he was one of the people who was involved in the mitzvah. So the child says, well, why was Moshe? Well, he said, well, of course Moshe. Moshe, was in, Moshe wanted to be involved in all mitzvahs. That is true on a certain level. But on a deeper level, the Mepharshim explained it's because Moshe Rabbeinu really understood the importance of Ari Mikla. Why? Because when Moshe killed the Mitzri, when, he, when they were attacking the Jews, and he had to run for his life, he had to run into mid. he had nowhere to go, Moshe knows what it means to be on the run with no way... Unfortunately, you know, the last generation, you know, the, all the Holocaust survivors know that feeling also. Being on the run and nowhere to go. So that's why Dafka Moshe Rabbeinu wanted the Ari Mikra, because that was the mitzvah he could relate to. And that's why, um, by as well, the mitzvah we're going to inherit to show, they already started praying for rain. We started Mashiach of Aruach already. That's the praising God and the ability to give rain. The same Talmud were actually. Um, asking God to bring rain. So in Eretz Yisrael already started already. Zayin Mar Cheshvan. We started a couple of weeks. So the question is, why is there a two-week gap between... They start two weeks after Sukkot. Masha of Aruach, they begin right away. But Talmud, they don't begin until two weeks later. So what's the Pshat? So the Gemara says, different one reason the Gemara gives is because the furthest spot away through the way they could travel then to get back home after circus is by the Nahar Prat took two weeks. So they figured it out, they give you two weeks to get home. I, so I don't get it. What are you telling me? It's really, Kwa needs rain. But since we don't want, these people don't want to get wet and get full of mud on the way home, so therefore the whole Kwa Yisho have to have to suffer? Like, what does it mean? So number one is, really, it was no man's land. If it was rainy season, then right, it would make a difference. But Actually, it's a two-week stay where it's okay if it rains, but you, it's not the rainy season yet. So, why are we? So, well, what are we worried about? Because these people, these people are going to pray it's not going to rain, and therefore they're. So, when you're sitting out walking in, in the outside and it's raining, and you pray for it not to rain, you have a lot more kavan than someone who's just sitting comfortable and it's out. You know what? It should, you know, let, let it rain or not rain. It's the same concept. So that's Tio Kinegat Avos, is when you have a, you have more than just a rooting interest. You're praying for something you need. Everyone had, Avram had his situation. He was the morning prayer that, what did Avram teach us? That even during good times, the sun is shining, it's beautiful out. Avram had a, was famous, mighty, he had a lot going for him. Even during good times, one has an obligation to pray. Yaakov, the opposite. 
Meyer of darkness, Golas, his whole life was one big service. Even during bad times, you have to pray. So the commentators say, that's no chiddush. Everyone knows that if you have an overabundance of good, so you're going to, you'll, you know, you'll thank God. Or if you have an overabundance of bad happening to you, there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. Everyone's going to pray. But the, but the hardest one is Mincha, Yitzchak Tzvila. Yitzchak had a good, but the sun was setting and it wasn't going to be, it was going to be bad later on. And that's a much harder time because you're not, that's why it says, one of the reasons, besides the pragmatic reasons, hard to dive a Mincha in the middle of the day, especially now, and our Pikaboa, there are reasons as well. And actually, that could have been the first three, Adam Harishon, Chazal say, he was Mispal Mincha, was it the same Mincha as Yitzchak? I don't know, but he was the first one to dive a Mincha. So they point out that Yitzchak, that's what Yitzchak gave us. So that's the Pshat in the Gemara. The Gemara says that Avram, that the Tfila Kedeged Avos and Tfila Kedeged Karbano. So those are the two different aspects that the Mesha Chachma was talking about. The Charbi, the one that Anshak Zagadova made, so that's the one that you, um, that as long as you say it properly, so it has more power, of course, has more power if you have no what you're saying as well. And, and then your own personal bakashas, those is tzvil connected of us. And that could be the pshat. We read in Rashi mentioned, a famous Rashi in Parashas told us, when Rivka was barren, so both Yitzchak and Rivka were praying that they should, that she should become pregnant. And the Pasik says, Vayet halo. And Rashi quotes the famous Chazal from Yavamus. He answered, Yitzchak's tzvila and not Rivka. Why? Because Yitzchak, Sadik ben Sadik, while Rivka, Sadik ben Rasha. Aye, so is that true? That if I'm appointing someone for a Shriach Sibor, I have to go for a Sadik ben Sadik. So halakhically, there's a discussion in the Akronim. So if you, if you assume yet, if you assume no, then how do you reconcile with the Rashi? So the answer is because when Yitzchak and Rivka, they were praying their own tefillah. That's the, the bow and arrow. So therefore, then maybe every good schus helps. But when you're davening now, we're davening the Kharbi, we're davening with the Anshik Nezakadola, that speaks powerful in its own right. Therefore, when someone is davening that we have, it doesn't make a difference. Even in Tarek Ben Russia can lead the service. But perhaps by Yitzchak, you need Tzchus because that was his personal tefillah, and therefore you need all the Tzchus um, you can get. The Gemara tells us, Tav Chava Baman Aleph in Brachas, Tzilas Ha'erev Ein La Keva. We know there's Shacharis Mincha Ma'erev, so Tzilas Ha'erev, evening service, Tzilas Ma'erev Ein La Keva, has no set time. That is the Lashon HaMishnah. And the Gemara and Chavzayim Rebbeiz is my Ein Keva. What does it mean, Ein Keva? My Rebbe has no fixed time. What does that mean? Ilema di'ibai mezaleku leilayla. If you say it means that I could dive in the whole night, listening to Tzvila Sa'erev Kohalayla. If you tell me Tzvila Sa'erev Ein Keva means I could have it all night, to so just say I could have it all night. Why write it in a more vague language? Elamai ain la keva, therefore must be another reason. Command Amar Tzvios Aravis Rishus. It must be following the opinion who holds that Tzvios Aravis is optional. The Amar of Yudah Mashmuel. Tzvios Aravis, Rai Gamuel Omer Chova. Rai Gamuel says, Mayrev is a chova, like Shacharis and Mincha. And Rabbi Yeshua Omer Rishus. And Rabbi Yeshua says, it's optional. And Amar Abayi, Allah Gedeva Omer Chova. Abayi says, the Allah is like the one who says it's a chova. But Rav Amar Rishus. So there's a machokis in the Gemara later on, whether Mayrev is optional or mandatory. So we pass in it's a rishus, and therefore that's what the if the if all the mission was telling me Engla keva you could have it all night, so then they would have said tfiyas 
Tfilas Erev Kol Laila. Wanted to teach me Ingla Keva. That's teaching me. There's no fixed time. It's telling me the essence of the Tfila is only optional. So that and that's what the Tamidei Rabbeinu Yonah write. That we learn from the language Ingla Keva. We learn out two dinim, two laws. One is she'ina chova kamot tzvila shachar zemincha el rishus. Fundamentally, the is the chi of you have an obligation to daven shachar zemincha. My rabbi don't. Ve'achir she'ina lozman kavua el lozman. Because the second thing is not only the rishus, but you have all night. The mishum haki go perish but zman kavua. Kamosha Pirish Bishar. And that's why the Mishnah left it vague, Tviyazamai Vengwa Keva, to teach me number one, both things we learn. Number one is that Mayrav is just a Rishus, and as well you have all night. So why is Tviyaz Ayrav's Rishus? The Gemara never gave us the reason. This is Engwa Keva, and we learn out that according to the opinion, Tviyaz Ayrav's Rishus, the way we passed it. But the Gemara never explained explicitly why Tzvigot Arvis is a Rishas. So in Rashi, in Shabbos, Dav Tesam and Beis, Divri Amaz Goloman, he explains, Da Dami and Tzvigot Arvis Rishas, Haino Dav Goloman, Da Amar, Tzvigot Kelegat Tamid in Tiknan. The Renesh, he can negate Hector Chalava, the Imorim, Jain, Maakvin, Baroman, the two of us ticked them. Right, to Rashi in Shabbos, and the Tess Amabez says, he refers this back to the Gemara and Bracha and Avchavav on whether who instituted Tzvila, what do we dive Is it based on the Avos or based on the Karbanos? So Rashi wants to say this that issue is dependent on the other machokis, whether Tvigas Aravis is a Chova or Rishus, a Dafchav Zayam Abes. The one who holds Tvigas Aravis Rishus, that's because it corresponds to the Karbanos, and you only had chakras and Mincha, there was no Karban for the night, it was only the leftovers, and therefore we understand why Meyer is optional. But according to the opinion, that's feel can I get avos, and then they're all equal. So that's how Rashi in Shabbos explains that those two disputes are dependent on one another. You only hold Arvis Rishus if it's the connected Karbanos, but if it's connected avos, it's a Chova. However, I think that's the Yeshua brings that down. Now, uh, on the Tziv, the Tziv in the Hemek Shaila Shiltas Ches, he wants to say, you can't give this shot. So we have got the knock to command them at Tvigas Avos Tiktun because even though, even if it's according to the Tziv in the in the Bahag the Shiltus, that even according to the opinion that Tvigas Avos Tiktun, it's still Tvigas Avos Rishus. We have Kain Taima, we have Kain Taima by Maishna. So. So the Tzib says no, based on other sources that, no, even according to the man, the Amar, Tzvila connected Avos, it's still a Rishos. So the question then is, why is Yaakov Avinos Tzvila discriminated against? And he was the shift because the 12 tribes come out of him, so you would think of, of one, he should be the highest. Why is it that Avram and Yitzhak's Tzvila got the status of a Chova? Well, Yaakov's only got a Rishos. So the Nitziv answers, the Ksavar, the Tzvigas Avas Tiktun, what does it mean? The Hod, the Tzvigas Avas Rishos, Hainim Hishem, the Yaakov Avino Gam came lo hispalo el al pisiba. In other words, Yaakov Avino didn't have in mind to be Koveya Mayrev for future generations. Avram instituted Tvila, he had in mind to, to Koveya Shacharis. And Yitzchak Mincha, in fact, that's Tosis over there, Eston Brachas. We see Avram already prayed the afternoon service, but that wasn't, some say it was only after Yitzchak did Mincha. Some say no, it was before, but he didn't have a mind. He was just davening. So 
Yaakov Avinu was not davening Mayrav because he was co being Kovea for future generations. But it was just based on something else. As the Gemara says in Chulin, and the Avsadi Aleph and Mabez, Kesimato Acharan, when he passed by Charan, Yaakov said to himself, Efshar Avarti Amakam Shezbal Avosai, Vanigo is Balauti, I'm going to pass by the place where my father is Davin, my Avos is Davin. By Avosai Davin, I'm not going to Davin. And therefore, you have died to Ramahad of his body, therefore, that's why he Davin Mayer. It was circumstance. It wasn't that he had, and therefore, it never took on the status of a Chova for future generations. And others want to point out as well that we know there's a famous dispute between the Rambam and the Ramban on whether Tfilah is biblical or rabbinical. So the Ramban writes, to be Esara, it's a mitzvah daraisa lehispalel. And therefore, since Yaakov Avinu, we know the he was surrounded by the rocks, the wild animals, the rocks that are protected from the wild animals, he was in Esara. And also, Shabarach, in the Ace of Harasha. Therefore, you can't bring a proof from Yaakov Avinu that he had in mind to set up Mayrev. He's only davening because it was an Ace Sarah. And therefore, um, it was a situation, again, either the situation that he was passing by the Haran and my Avosa is davening, how could I not? Or because it was an Ace Sarah, and therefore, that's why he was davening. Others point out. On the opposite scale is that the, the Gemara talks about, let's say, what someone's in, in danger. If you're in danger, so therefore, um, there's a Tzilak Sara, and obviously if you can't dive in, you can't dive in at all. So some people wanted to point out that since he was in Makam Sakana, so in theory he was exempt from davening. So if Yaakov himself davened, even though he was only in a state of exemption, then how could his you should be able to be any stronger than his own. So different different suggestions given on why Yaakov's tefillah was discriminated against. According to Rashi and Shabbos, it's this, it depends whether connected of us or connected Kabranos. But according to Nitzimna, even if it's connected of us, it's still Rishus, and it was only for coincidental. He's passing by Haran, or it was an Esara, or he was in a state of exemption, you know, different reasons given, but the bottom line is, Yaakov's Tvila, even if you assume Tvila connected Avos, it's still only a Rishos. So what about Bizman Hazet? What about now in our day? Is Mayrav optional? Most people think they have to dive a Mayrav, so what changed? Why is it a Chova today? And it was on once historically a rishus. So the Gemara tells us in Brachas and Avchavav Amun Aleph, the beginning of the fourth parak, Tov alo hispalo aravis, mispalo shacharish tayim. One who made a mistake and didn't dive in my riv, he has to dive in shacharish twice. So Tosis points out over there in Avchavav Amun Aleph, in Tomar, Later on, we know Rav tells us Tzvilas Aris is Rishus, and we passed him like him. The old Kasha, the number one is, if it's a Rishus, so why do you have to go back? Why was why Tavlo is Pal Aris is Tzvilas Shach I thought you told me it's a Rishus. So why do you have to um, go back? And secondly, the Gemara says later on, that Rav and Amabez, Tovalo is Palo Yala Vayavo Balayla, ain't Magzirin So the Gemara says later on that if you forget Yala Vayavo on Rosh Chodesh at nighttime, you don't have to go back because basin doesn't mean at night. Bisham Naim Akaisha is a Chodesh Balayla. So Tosa says, Lama Lei Hai Taima. What do we need to reason about Ain Makaisha is a Chodesh Balayla? Basin doesn't convene at night. And that's why you don't have to go back. I have a much more simple reason. Tape of lay, the Tzvilas Arav is Rishus. And the effort to Rishus, so the effort doesn't have to go back. So let's toast this Kasha. What's in the Gemara? 
Torah below it's Bel Arab is Mispao Shachar Shtayim. What does that mean? We, I thought we just finished establishing that Tfilas Arab is optional. If it's, so if it's optional, why do I have to dive in two times? Tartosis answers, V'yesh Romar, Ta'ad Arbin and Tfilas Arab is Rishus, Hainu Agabe Mitzvah Cheres, V'yo Veres. It's only a relative term. Relative term. The Azar mean in Tidcha Tvilas Aris mi Pana of a Lachinam Engel of Atos. Atos says Rishus doesn't mean Rishus here. Rishus means lower level obligation. In contrast to other obligations, Aris is only Rishus. So if there's another mitzvah, the Heo Veres, so then you don't have to dive a Mayrav. But this, not this to watch the game and not to dive a Mayrav, that's not okay. So we see Tosis points out the Dafka Ushe Mitzvah Overes Mutogavato Tfilas Arvis. Tosis here says it's only if there's other mitzvah. If you don't do it now, you go daven, then you skip Mayra. But if you have an option to do the mitzvah later, you still do Mayra. However, in in Shabbos, Daf Tesam and Beis, Tzibya Maskel Goman Damar Katsvu Tosis. I feel Arvis Nitkas. I feel my mitzvah Sheino. Overus. My risk gets pissed off even if it's not a passing mitzvah. Im yeshum mitzvah she'enu averus. Yasa mitzvah lo yispal. Hava bisha mitzvah enu averus. Hava bachino mingo. So Tosis in Shabbos has a little different. Tosis here writes the only time my rib is pushed off if you have another pressing issue right now. Tosis in Shabbos says even if it's not a pressing mitzvah, but the mitzvah is there. You can knock off Mayrav, get rid of, don't do Mayrav, and do the other mitzvah. But according to everyone, Luchinam, you can't just be Mavat to it. So we see, according to Tosvis, that when he says that Tzvilas Arvis Rishus, doesn't mean literary Rishus, it just means in contrast to other obligations. The Chaim Uva B'Shem Hagra, B'Shem from Gra, has a similar use in a different context. Seven days you have to eat matzah. Call Shiva Mitzvah. All seven days you have a mitzvah to eat matzah. They don't correlate Rishus, El Gabi Laila, Rishon and Shechova. U Mitzvah Gabi Chova, Rishus Karile. So the grass is the same thing. It's not, um, that's Tosis, that. Even though you have a you have a mitzvah to eat um, matzah all seven days, but since in contrast to the chova leil rishona, so therefore we call rishus. So when so therefore um, that's what Tosis says. It's not really a rishus according to Tosis. That's why you have to go back. Tovelo is bal arav is bal shachar ishtayim because myrav is not a myr is really a chova. It's just a lo- lower level one. However, Katsu are Rishonim Shem Bahag, they write give a different answer. The Baal Hilchus Gedola says, The Hainu Hishim the Afagad, the Meikaradin, Tfilas Arvitz Rishusi, even though fundamentally, so those things fundamentally Arvitz wasn't a rish, Rishus, it was just a lower level obligation. And the Baal Hilchus Gedola says, the, that, No, that really Meirv historically was a Rishus. But the Kalei so accepted as a Chova. And this we accepted it as a Chova, that's why we have to go back. And what's Pshat Kvar Kibu Allah Kechova? So there's, um, seems to be, the Rambam and the Bali Tosa seem to learn what Kvar Shavu Lechova means. Milash and Rambam and Hilchas Tzvila Perak Aleph Halacha Vav L'chorem Ashma Da'ai Kiblu Ahayno Kabola Sibor Not a personal thing The Tzibor accepted Mayur as a Chobar As a Chobar As an obligation Shagain Kasav Ve'ein Tzvilas Arav Is Chobar Ketzvilas Shachar Is a Mincha Mayur does not have the same status As Shachar Is a Mincha Ve'ava Pike Nagu Kaisro B'chol Makomos Luz Paul Nevertheless Even though it doesn't have the same status Nevertheless Klai Yisrael has accepted the Dava Mayrim. V'kibu'a ketzvi l'aschova. Mi d'ktsav ha-rabam shenagu Klai Yisrael. 
Vikibrua Kitriyas Kova Lahor Mashra the Ay Kabola he Kabola's Kai Isra. It wasn't a I made a personal obligation. I'm gonna dab him, but it's no it had nothing to do with the, the personal choice. It was a choice decided by others. That's how the Rambam worked. And however, from Tosfos, its mashma was a kabbalas hayachid, because in the Chagiga, Tosfos writes in the Tesava Beis in Chagiga, Dibav Mesko O, the lokafi hilchitz kedola shapiris the avgaman the amar rishus, ishav yilachova have a kakova halesa the mid the lowest kina mahachi shagari spell b'shal leilos. He talked that he taught, so therefore he quotes the Bali Tosis. Aresha Lishna Kama the Tosis Shavya Lachova Haidu Yachit Shaspal Arvis Bishar Lagos. He's talking about an individual who dava Maya of another night, Shaz Chayaba Ketfila Shova. The Lishna Basra Haidu Yachit Shaspal Arvis, the Osa Tfila Sha Oso Arab, Kashuva Etzlo Kakova. So Tosis points out that it, it seems to be a Kabbalah of the Yachid. So we, have a, so we had the Kasha of Tosis. What do you mean? The Gemara says if you forget to dive in Mayav, you got to dive in Shacharis twice. It doesn't make any sense. I didn't have to dive in Mayav in the first place. Why do I have to repeat it? So Tosis is because it's not a Rishus, it's a Chova. It's just a lower level Chova. In contrast to another myth, like the Gorah writes by Matzah. And then we have a Machlokis Tosis in the Rambam about whether, what kind of Kabbalah. According to the Rambam, is Kaiso took it on. But it's Masha from Tosis and Kagiga that it's a Kabbalah Sayochit. So I guess in theory, according to the Bali Tosis, if a, per, if a Bar Mitzvah boy got up and started saying, Every time he dava Meir, he said Bli Neder, or I'm not accepting it, Zechovas, and then perhaps maybe it still retain a Rishus. According to the Rama, we don't have a say in the matter. It's called Kibbu Alav Chova. And um, we'll get into it. We have something similar the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah. Um, we'll get into that. But this time, the last point about Kvar Shove Lachova, so the Magana of Ram and Hilchas Pesach writes that even though women are putter from Sri Asa Omer, like all Mitzvah Sasei Shaz Mangrava, it's Mangrava, they took a Kvar Shovu, a Lach Chovah. He has the same language as the Bahag, as he says it, the Magna of Rabbi Zviris Omer. And the Rabbi Kiv, and, and Rabbi Akiva Eger Kasev King Lagabi, Rov Mitzvah Sasei. He says, Rov Nachididad Machmiyon Atzman. Vizahiris Vizu Makayim, Rov Mitzvah Sasei Shaz Mangrava, Kagon Chovah, Luluf Sukha, Bechin. So the Rabbi Kibbe Eger seems to work with the Magan Ram that other mitzvahs as well, women have, other mitzvahs as Eisha as Mangrama, women have accepted them as a Chova. However, the Minchas Chinach in Mitzvah Shin Vav does not go for this. He says, the Dabazazarach Iyan, what is the Magan Ram talking about? And for that matter, Rabbi Kibbe Eger, but the Dabazazarach Chadash, the Nashim in Kibbu Aleim Hasos Mitzvah Asei Shein Peturim, that they become chaya because kishav yolachova. Loraisi came b'shum makav. I don't find that anywhere. I. What about Marv? Ain do melot tfilas arvis. I in mirishonim. Mechenyes deos to also go lasos mitzvahs asay shas man grama. It's an opinion the gemara that it's also. We'll call you alma ain't no mitzv ain't no mitzvah klal. And therefore, well, yedati he leaves the mug in Avram zarech iyan. However, in the dark emotion of war, the Vagahai Gav Nago Amidon Shavil Kakova. So he goes into it. Um, so that's basically um, the Magana Ram wants to say it by Svir to Omer. And Rabbi Kiva Eger disagrees and agrees with him. And Mitchas uh, Chinuch takes up the test. So we'll have to stop here. Let's summarize that the Gemara talks about. Tfilas Arab is Ein Keva, so we said Ein Keva it means we learn that to Rishus, and we learn you have all night to um, say it. I why is it a Rishus? So according to Rashi and Chab is because it depends on if it's Tfil connected to others, it's a Chova connected to Kabbalas, then it's a Rishus. However, the Tzivus is no even even according to the 
Avos, it's still Risha. So the Ziv explains he was just, it's a possible he was passing by the house of his forefathers, he wasn't going to say, he wasn't going to daven by her. No, that's not an option, so therefore he daven. So therefore it was only by circumstance and not, or others say he was in a place of Sakana, so he was davening anyway. Others say he was exempt for different reasons. Give him, he didn't have a mind to Kalbeya for future generations. So even, so we see uh, Tvilas Arvis is Rishus. So therefore, if Tvilas Arvis is Rishus, then why would Gemara say, if you forget to daven Mayer, if you got to daven twice? The Ephetosis answered, in Brachas, it's only a Rishus, Gogabi Mitzvah, Acheres, according to a more stricter mitzvah, then we say it's a rishus, but it's not really a rishus, and never you have to repeat davening. Two days in toasters, whether here in Shab is whether it's only nidcha, the other mitzvah, if the mit, other mitzvah is over, even if the other mitzvah is not. And that's what the Gra writes by matzah, that it's, it's, seven days you have a mitzvah of matzah, but compared to the first day, it's called the rishus. And then the Bahag says, Kvashov Yogakachova. And therefore, at one point it was a Risha, so then maybe you wouldn't have to go back. But today it's a Chova. So therefore, uh, you do have to repeat. And Machok is Rambam in the Balitos is whether it's um, Kabbalah at Tzibor, like the Rambam warns, or like the Balitos is Kabbalah Yachid. And therefore, the Magadam Ram extends this to Hilchas Firas Omer. The Nushim Kfar Kribo Lakakova and the Rabbi Giva Eger extends it to other mitzvahs as well. And the Mitzchazina says, How could you can't extend it? It's clearly they're exempt, and there's no source to say it's Kakova. My Rabbi is different, either based on, you know, depending on what reason we're giving. So we'll have to stop here. And we'll have to continue on some more um, in Yoni Mayrav, how Mayrav is different. Then Shachar and Mincha, my Nafka Mina, where will be the, some practical differences whether it's a Rishus or not?